y'all guess what God did? He gave me a whole house to live in. <laughs> it's not permanent, but it's pretty amazing. What's up y'all, it's Rachel Elizabeth and you're watching Real Talk with Rach, where we talk about the real things because it's the real conversations that get us deeper in relationship with others and deeper in intimacy with God. And y'all, this is how I live my life. We gotta talk real. And one of those ways I'm being real is in sharing this purposefully homeless journey God has taken me on. For more than nine and a half months now, I have been traveling, following the Holy Spirit wherever He leads me. Sometimes it's to teach me things and prepare me for whatever He's got up His sleeve next. And sometimes, most times, it's to serve people. He'll lead me to people who need prayer, places and people that need intercession, or someone to help them, or they legitimately need to hear about Jesus, and they've been asking and wondering. And I'll show up at the perfect time because God knew that. And y'all, this isn't about me. It's just because I said yes. And it's been an incredible adventure. But I'll say this. It's not easy, and it's been exhausting. And a week ago this time, I was rushing to get everything I needed to get done done before I checked out of another Airbnb. And as grateful as I am to have had that place to stay, it was just a reminder of how transient I am right now and how exhausted I am. And I didn't know where I was gonna stay that night. And God provided. God provided a place in Malibu to stay with a couple girls from Everdyne. And it was absolutely amazing, but it wasn't quite what I needed. God knew exactly what I needed, just as he knows exactly what you need. And he knows exactly when to provide it. Because what he's doing before he provides what we're asking for is heart work. And it could be that he allows something really, really hard your life to do that. But he never allows anything that he hasn't gone ahead of you in, that he's not leading you through hand in hand, and that he's not using for your good, for his glory. But back to the story. So Friday, I was in Malibu and I was invited to stay as long as I needed, but I knew that I had to be in San Diego to help out with Gospel House. And so I packed up my stuff again, expecting to be back in a day or two, but packed up my stuff and headed to San Diego. And I got to Gospel House where I met the girl that I was gonna be staying with that night. Her name is Liz. And I got her contact information. I put it in my phone and we got started with worship. And during worship, there was this guy that got up and shared his testimony. And in that, he shared that he's been living out of his car for months. And while he shared, I knew, I knew that I knew that I knew that I had to get up and pray for him for a house which was exactly what I needed and had been praying for and have been praying for, for myself. So I got up and I prayed for him and it was amazing. And I know that God's gonna do something through that for him. But after that, we got right back into worship and it was so beautiful and I had zero expectations, but multiple people came up to pray with me after that. Two people in particular named Jenna and Jared came up and prayed for me. And after they did, Jenna asked me what my most immediate need was. And I said, I need a place of sanctuary to rest and recover where I don't have to check out the next day. I need a house. I need a place to be by myself. I need privacy. I need a refuge. She looked at Jared and back at me and said, I might have something for you. And in that moment, to be honest, I never expected that it could be a house. Never. I was curious, but that's not what I expected it to be. And so I pulled out my phone again to get her contact information and Liz's information was still on my phone and she saw it and she said, oh my gosh, are you the girl that's staying with Liz? And when I told her yes, she said, I'm Liz's roommate. You're going to be staying with me. <laughs> That night, I got to know Jenna a little bit better. And Jared and another friend, Paul, were there too. So I got to know them better too. We had an amazing time in fellowship, and just getting to know what the Lord is doing, what they're up to. And Jenna told me a little bit about who she's been looking for. And after sharing the details of my story and hearing theirs, I went to bed so grateful for divine connections and a place to stay. The next morning, Jenna shared what it was that she possibly had for me. She said that she is working with the founder of an organization who is establishing places of rest and recovery and restoration for girls who have been rescued from trauma. And then she shared with me that there was a home, an empty, furnished home, in need of someone who could stay there 
to help with the home. Y'all, if you've ever heard the phrase, what you're seeking is seeking you, I, I literally can't think of a better way to describe what this situation was. They were looking for me and I was looking for them. And now I have a place to stay, a place of refuge, a place of privacy and sanctuary where I can just rest and get creative work done without stressing about where I'm gonna stay. And it's beautiful. And there's possibility of being here longer than just a few weeks, if that's what God has for me. And I don't know if this is what God has for me, but he's taught me so much through it already. In this space, I've spent a lot of time with these new friends and we actually had a worship night last night and the night before, and it was awesome. But what God's been showing me through these times and through the stories that we've shared over the past few days is that not only are our human battles a spiritual thing, but the way we fight those battles is in the secret, quiet place where we enjoy communion with our Heavenly Father. And I'm gonna say that a different way because I feel like that sounded a little over the top spiritual for some of you guys. So let me explain it like this. The Bible says our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual darkness all around us. And that's in Ephesians chapter six. What that's really saying is that if you have a fight with a coworker, or you and your best friend have a falling out, or you have an argument with your significant other, or it's something as extreme as death threats and justice issues and real life enemies, you guys, these battles aren't something to face the way the world faces them. We're not to defend ourselves with words and violence. We're not to attack verbally. We have an example and an advocate and a defender, and that's Jesus. And with him as our example, we can see through his life, through the Bible, how he responded to his enemies, how he responded when he was accused of things he didn't do, how he responded when he was put on trial and put to death as an innocent man. Through his example, we can see what it is he's calling us to. And you may think that's impossible, but let me tell you from personal experience that by his strength, in our humility and weakness, he empowers us to do that in our own lives. So practically, what does that look like? For this, I want you to imagine something with me. And that is a banquet table where Jesus is seated at the head of the table and he has a seat right next to him and he invites you to sit with him. And there's a spread to outdo any spread you've ever seen. It's better than any Thanksgiving you've ever had. And it's all your favorite foods. And you're just sitting there with some amazing wine and you're just enjoying Jesus and this amazing food. Sounds pretty amazing, doesn't it? Well, that's my friends. That image describes communion with the Father. It describes that deep, intimate place of enjoying Him or enjoying time with Him. That is cultivated in the secret place while reading the Word and getting to know His character, finding out what it looks like to follow Jesus' example, spending time letting the Holy Spirit teach you what's in His Word, letting Him transform your mind and your heart. That is how you fight your battles. That is how you face your enemies. You go into the secret place, you spend time with Jesus, prayer, worship, meditation, reading, studying his word, studying his character, asking him to renew your mind, asking him to transform your heart. And then you leave and you go out and you start to notice changes that he's done in you where you don't respond the same way you used to to your enemies. You don't respond the same way you used to to your significant other. You begin to desire to lay down your life. You begin to desire to serve others first before yourself. You desire to lay down your preferences. You desire to lay down your rights. You desire to follow the example of Jesus where you don't defend yourself because you know in your heart and trust that God actually is defending you whether you see it or not. God is your defender. God is your advocate. God is who fights for you. The Bible says it's the Lord who fights for you. You need only to be still. And that's what that looks like. You have to cultivate that stillness. You have to cultivate that secret place. And there is real battle in prayer and intercession and worship. Do you know worship is actually a weapon? <laughs> worship changes atmospheres. Worship changes hearts. Worship tunes your heart to a place where you can now communicate with God without ulterior motive. And if you don't know what true worship is, worship is simply agreeing with who God is. 
dance you can do that in so many ways you can do it in dance in art in music in singing in prayer in so many different ways but the point is that you do it and you make it a priority acknowledging that you can't do anything apart from him that it's only in your weakness that his power is made perfect it's only in your weakness that he is strong where he can show off because you've made room for him to show off where you can't take credit for what he's done it's in weakness and humility that he is so beautifully made known so y'all let me encourage you by how he's encouraged me and that is that when we spend more time at the table rather than trying to fight our battles on our own rather than trying to vindicate ourselves rather than stewing over what's happening in the media let's turn off the tv let's stop scrolling instagram let's stop comparing ourselves let's stop trying to figure out how we're going to get revenge on those who have betrayed us those who have hurt our families and let's start battling in the secret place let's start interceding for our enemies let's start loving those who hate us and let's do that at the table y'all i am so excited to spend more time in this place and really press into what god has here but i don't know how long it's gonna last i don't know if this is a week or two or if it's long term or if god has something else but what i do know is that i'm gonna take that one lesson and i am gonna take full advantage of this time and this space and i'm gonna go to war so this week will you be still with me will you take your place at the table because jesus bought that place for you will you stop comparing yourself to others or claiming that you lack anything because there's nothing you lack go read psalm 23 if you liked this video thank you so much for watching please give me a thumbs up and share it with a friend thank you so much to my patreon family you guys are incredible i'm so grateful for you if you want more information on patreon or any other way to support this ministry and what I'm doing, check out the links in the description box below and I'll see you next time. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, I want you to tell me one way that God has surprised you this week. Okay.